Hey guys, how's it going? I'm trying to figure out if I'm crooked on here. Am I crooked? Good to see you guys. So I hope you're having an awesome week so far. Welcome to Monday. You know I love Mondays. Mondays are awesome because it's a chance to start all over again, to dig back into what we're supposed to be doing, to dig back into our purpose. And I hope you are having a great Monday. I actually survived an exercise class this morning. I haven't gone in like three weeks, so I'm super happy that it worked out and I survived. I'm alive, so it's good. <laughs> um, I hope you are doing great and getting ready to start a new week, a new year. So let's get right in. I just wanna jump right into the topic today. Also, don't forget, if you're watching the Fierce Faith Summit that starts today, and if you're not watching it, go look for it online, Fierce Faith Summit, and f register yourself. It's all week, and it's a free summit online with Allie Worthington. She's got, I think this morning is Bianca Oldhoff, and I can't remember who else is speaking this morning, but it's free of these conversations that they recorded about fear and success and working through the things that they've worked through. So I encourage you to go sign up for that, and like I said, it's free, and you'll have lifetime access. So do that and you'll love it. So Fierce Faith Summit, that's that. So let's just jump right in. The topic today is rejection. And you know, I usually bring you topics that I'm walking through myself. That's how I am learning these things is by walking through these things personally. And you know, rejection is such a hard topic. It's such a hard thing to face because so often rejection wants to define who we are and when we're rejected from that promotion or that relationship or that, you know, experience where someone told us we were dumb or whatever it is, it wants to define us and it wants to tell us who we are. It wants to tell us who our identity is and that is the danger in rejection because most of the time that rejection is coming from someone who maybe is not even they're in a place where um, maybe the rejection doesn't even have to do with you. You know, that teacher in third grade that told you you were stupid, maybe they were having a bad day and they told you that. Or maybe even somebody that you know is not feeling well, so they're cranky. Or maybe that husband or that boyfriend that chose another woman instead of you, that rarely has anything to do with you, but it usually has a lot to do with where they are. But what happens is we get rejected, and then we take on the characteristics of what is being talked about. So, um, you know, you feel left out from the conversation, all your girlfriends went to lunch and you weren't invited. So we take on that as rejection instead of like, oh, they, it was like a you know, logistical thing. We take on this characteristic of I'm not wanted. And I found myself in a position a couple of weeks ago. I was doing my quiet time. And while I was doing it, I was just feeling really rejected. I had been through some things. And you know what? I saw what happening. What was happening was that because I was being rejected, instead of being myself and realizing that that rejection was on that other person's part, I started taking on the identity of feeling unlovable because they didn't love me or they didn't do whatever I thought it was that should show me that they love me. So instead of understanding that about them, then I started looking at myself. I was feeling pretty down and I was like, why am I feeling this way? And I was just kind of praying and you know, and I just started really looking at the way I was feeling and I realized that I was feeling unlovable. So I was taking on the label that their rejection of me said to me. And we do that. So if someone says that, you know, your third grade teacher said that you were dumb, we take on this thing that says we're not smart and we can't learn. Somebody says something to you that, you know, you're too loud, you're too obnoxious. We take on this thing that says, yeah, you're right, I am too much. But actually, really, it could be something that's going on with them. Hey, good morning, Beth, I see you. And so, rejection threatens to change our identity. And we find ourselves identifying with that rejection, identifying with what somebody said about us and defining ourselves. So we kind of take that burden and put it on. Like I was saying, um, that Beth, that in this rejection, I began to feel unlovable, even though the rejection is not about me at all. And so sometimes we take that on. But listen, guys, here's what I want to speak to you this morning. 
Whatever that rejection is that has been spoken over your life, I just want to speak some truth over that rejection. Because when we began to grab a hold of the truth, hey Heidi, when we begin to grab a hold of the truth, then we're able to walk out our identity without identifying ourselves with that rejection. So for instance, in this case, I was feeling unlovable. My God was just like, Julie, who are you? What are you? Tell me about yourself. And just whispering to my heart, and I started saying, you know what, I am loved. I am the apple of your eye. I am beautiful. I am confident in what you're doing. And so we, as we begin to identify ourselves with our true identity, then we can come out of that rejection space and we realize that that rejection has more to do with that person than it actually does with us. So I want to say this morning that you are smart. If you're struggling with that, listen, you have infinite intelligence. There is nothing that you can't do. You have Google and you have God, as Ali said, and you are smart. You are able. You are able to handle whatever is coming your way, that you are going to be able to take it in with strength and dignity and grace, that you can be able to make it through this time. If you're struggling with that person that rejects rejected you, um, the boyfriend, the husband, the wife, the girlfriend, I want to say you are desirable. You are so loved and that you are beautiful in heaven's eyes. And there is nothing more precious than you. Uh, when heaven looks down and, and God sees you, you make his heart. It says that you can't even count the thoughts that he has toward you. You're so precious to him that you can't even count the amount of thoughts that he has toward you. And you may feel lonely on this earth. You may feel alone. You may feel despised. But that is nothing compared to what heaven says about you. You are wanted and you are loved and you are desirable. And God wants to spend time with you and he wants to speak in to your life and he wants to see you strengthened and he wants to see you walking in your fullness of everything that you have been designed to be. He wants the best for you and he wants to pour it out on you and there is nothing about you that is limited in him. There's nothing that about you that's limited in him. You can do anything. You can be anything. You can be the fullness of everything that you're created to be. You are unique and you are special. You're not just a run of the mill. You're not average. You are created to be above and beyond extraordinary, a light that shines in the darkness. And so there was something so special about you and you are loved. I just I just feel that this is the saying that you are loved. You need to know that. You are loved with the love that surpasses any love that is on this earth and on this planet, that you are loved by the most extraordinary love that you could ever imagine. And so if you're feeling rejected today, I just hope that you can begin saying to yourself, what your identity actually is because your identity isn't what that person says about you. It's not what that person thinks about you. It's who you actually are. And if we saw ourselves as we actually were, do you know how much that would change the world, how much it would change us, how much it would change our reaction to circumstances? Because you are amazing. You are a masterpiece. And I hope you never, ever forget it. And um, anyway, I hope that gives you some tools to, to move forward when you feel rejected, to find your identity in who you actually are, not what your rejection says you are, because that tries to label us. And we're not buying into that, right? Because that's just, maybe somebody's having a bad day. Maybe they don't feel good. Maybe whatever, whatever's going on with them, that doesn't define who you are, but who you are is defined by who God says you are. So you got it. All right. I love you guys. Mwah. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Beth. I hope you all have an awesome week this week. And I'm just blessing your week. You're going to have lots of favor this week. I'm just saying it is a week for favor. It's a year for favor. You got this. So may your minds be fierce and your heart strong and your spirit so kind today. And I will see you on Thursday at 8.30. Go love somebody today. All right. Bye.